What's up guys, I'm Carson, this is my buddy Max. Today we're doing a review of this 2016 Caterpillar 246D. Now how long have you been running this machine and what do you primarily use it for? Hey guys, uh, so I've been running the same exact machine for two years now. Uh, we are at the Maplewood Home Depot in Minnesota. Uh, main purpose is snow removal. Obviously in the springtime we do some mulch work where our company just hauls in loads of mulch and then we replace every single bed with the skid loader on all our commercial sites. Awesome, let's go ahead and jump right into the review then. Alright, we got the 2016 246D Caterpillar, not plugged in, I'm going to see how she starts. It is like 35 degrees out right now though. A little bit of a sputter, but not bad. How many hours does this have on it? Uh, it's got 135 hours. So 135? It's pretty much new. Pretty much new, yeah. Alright Max, so what are some of the things you think about this machine? Uh, visibility, lighting, things like that nature. What have you noticed over the last two years of running this machine? So some pros and cons in my opinion. Uh, the lack of visibility in the rear window. Uh, it, you can't really see the greatest out the back. It does have a backup camera, which I use all the time. But I'm just saying if it failed, um, just kind of turning your head, you just wouldn't be able Have to Have you see ever much. noticed the camera gets plugged with snow or anything like that when it's snowing out? Does oh, it yeah. ever get blurry? All, all the time. All so the time. visibility has been an issue that way. Uh, we're holding the camera at the top of my head now. I'm 6'2", and we can just barely see the top of the seat. So visibility is definitely an issue there. Another point uh, where it lacks visibility. So the setup that I run, I run a 12 foot long pusher, so it's fairly wide. Now, to see each side of the pusher, I actually have to put my head against this and actually look over to see what's on each side of the pusher because it's so long. And that just has to do with the type of uh, plow that's on here. I guess that's uh, different for every machine. Looks like on the case video that we just reviewed, the 2017 Case SR240, I made mention of how these beams around here on that machine are super narrow and super small. On this machine, you can see that's not the case. Um, how's visibility out the front of the machine, Max? Ever had any issues with seeing out the glass door? That door does look a lot bigger than the case. So, no, I mean, I've got full visibility out the front. Um, I'd say it's, it's near perfect. Yeah. yeah, I did a great job with visibility in the front. Also looks like the entrance on this is way more user friendly compared to that case. You actually have to kind of step up and over on the case which is a little bit difficult and it is a bit smaller door on that case. So I would say for getting in and out of the machine and then visibility out of the front of the machine, the cat takes the cake for that one. So what about lighting on this Max? Do these lights, they cut it for you? Do you like those or what? Yeah, the lighting's great. Uh, for visibility at nighttime in the front, uh, it's outstanding actually. But one thing I do wish Caterpillar would actually improve for lighting is lights on the sides. I know Case does that, and that's just a cool idea just because it's just pitch dark on each side. Yeah, like, like we were I just said, talking when about. I look out the window yep. to see each side of the pusher, I can't really see because it's dark. Yeah. Then again, this is a pretty wide pusher for this machine, too, 12 feet. But, so this machine comes in at 74 horsepower, which is just under the DEF mark or diesel particulate filter. Um, so there's no emissions of that, of that nature on this machine where you have to add fluid to it. Uh, and it is a 7,500 pound machine, very comparable to the case that we just demoed. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that video or you wanna see that video, link is in the description below. So, do these tires definitely help, Max, with the uh, snow plowing? I know we've personally never ran a set of tires like these uh, snow dedicated tires. We've always got a set of good soft compound radials that we put on, but how do you like these for plowing? So, yeah, these are full blown winter tires. Uh, the tread pattern is actually designed 
uh, to actually bite down in the asphalt. So it's very good traction in the snow. Uh, when it comes time in the spring to do mulch, man, these tires suck. The they skid's it's, just hopping around skid, everywhere. The skid hops around and you can't really maneuver at all. Yeah, so it gets a little tricky that way. Tires, though. I like them. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you uh, all the controls and features inside the cab. So first things first, both of these arms have to be folded down for the machine to actually start. So I'll start up the skid for you. Let the glow plug cycle through. So on the upper left corner, you've got your air settings, your hot and cold, and it does have AC, which is nice in the summertime. Uh, you got your parking brake, you got your windshield wipers, which is nice. You got your unlock and lock for the attachments, um, auxiliary. Over here, you've got your screen, which is nice, and then if you back up, the backup camera. Over here, you've got your lighting, two joysticks, race the bucket, back and forth, side to side. Back here, you got the radio, sounds good. It's got an aux port too, Bluetooth. It's got the whole nine yards. So yeah, it's pretty nice, I like it. All right, so we're gonna be talking about the snow plow that's on here a little bit. Um, as you guys know, we run the cage plow, so this is something completely new to us. The cage plow's got the hydraulic side-to-side -side motion. It's an eight-foot plow with a cage that actually comes off it if you tip it forward, and then it'll come off, and then you got just a standard straight blade plow. This thing is completely different, unlike anything I've ever run or seen, so we're gonna let Max explain kind of how it works. For sure. So pusher that I have on this machine, it's called the Arctic Sectional Snow Pusher. And sectional, it literally has sections of the blade itself. So if the contour of the asphalt is uneven, each section will actually align with the contour of the asphalt. Yeah, as you can see, it's split up into five different sections here that move individually. Along with, you said there's another trip edge on this? Yeah, so it's a... Uh, it's a double trip edge system, so the blade itself is a trip edge, obviously, and these will just adjust up and down if you run into an obstacle. So there's two purposes to the trip edge, actually, which is fairly nice. So it looks like it's held on by rubber blocks here. What do you... Uh... Yes, my opinion, not the greatest design, just because rubber isn't the strongest material to support all this heavy metal in front, obviously. Uh, a lot of our guys with our company, we break quite a few blocks per year. How many per year do you break on average? I broke... Per plow. I broke two this year. Uh, some other buddies that plow with the same plow have broken a couple. Last year, my first year, I broke like five or six. Okay. So... How easy are they to replace? Looks like just a couple of bolts here. Yeah, it's fairly easy. Just two bolts, you know, in and out the new one. Okay. So... Yeah, it's a, it looks like a pretty interesting system. Looks like it's not super reliable with the blocks. However, it looks like it does get a really clean cut here. Yeah, um, it scrapes perfectly right down to the asphalt. Yeah, that's good. I see, looks like there isn't, I know a lot of guys like to run shoes. I don't see spots to have shoes put on this plow. Uh, so it looks like it's really made for getting a really clean finish. There is no hydraulic side to side motion, which is kind of unfortunate because that is kind of nice. Um, have it's, you ever, when you're pushing a lot of snow, have you ever noticed that it starts to spill out the sides when you start yeah, to do long it runs? it takes a while though. You know, takes it takes a lot of snow. how much snow there is, so just show them like it just clips this lot. So if there's an inch on the ground, I could probably do this whole span from all the way from that pile down there and all the way to this pile right here without it seeping out of the sides. That's pretty good. That's a 12 foot width from one side of the lot here, couple hundred, few hundred feet. So it cleans up the lot pretty quickly. It would be nice to have a hydraulic side to side motion, I would imagine, but not opinion, the end of the world. If, if, so Cat makes these blocks. If Cat had some type of steel or 
some strong material on top and the bottom of the blocks that actually flex. Something better than I rubber. I think that would support the rubber more and obviously cause less blocks to break. So I think that'd be a key feature for something to improve. Last thing we're going to look at on this machine is serviceability. Uh, Max was saying that this solenoid down here on these cats is known to go bad and this is just a power on and off solenoid like in that case video. Uh, the case has got the same thing. You turn the switch and it kills all power to the machine so you can lock this back door and then it would be impossible even if you do have a key to start the vehicle. He was saying those go bad so you have to arc the two cables on the back together right to fix it. Yeah a lot of other people have had the same issue actually. It just won't start. So you just have to override the system by having these two cables just on one of these and I guess it just overrides it. And yeah, works. just arcs it there. And then looks like we got air filter here obviously. We've got washer fluid, coolant, red coolant in here or something. Looks like we got a fuel filter here. Um, trying to find out where all our filters and everything are. Looks like a hydraulic filter back here maybe, or another type of fuel filter. No, that's hydraulic. And then looks like the oil filter, similar to the case, will be underneath the cab on this one as well. I'm not seeing it back here. So that's probably how you get to that. Looks like maintenance is pretty straightforward on these. Um, if you guys own one of these and think that there's something that they should do different on these or something you don't like about maintenance on this, let us know in the comments below. I'd like to hear what's good and what's not good about these if everything is accessible. Just looking at it here for the first couple of minutes, everything looks pretty good. Battery looks easy to get out, get to a, uh, the positive on that side there. If you gotta jump it, it doesn't look too hard. Everything looks pretty good. That is the one thing nice about having such a tall back end here, although it limits your visibility. You do have plenty of room to work in here to get at the engine and everything like that. Um, looks like the reason it is so tall is because the hydraulic coolers are up on top here. So, all in all, looks like a pretty good machine. Let us know what you guys think of this machine. If you would buy one of these, if you have one of these, let us know what you think of it. Uh, I'd love to hear more from you.
Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Thanks, Max, for letting us review this machine. It was a pleasure. Not um, a problem, buddy. Anytime. Feel free to check out some of the other videos. We've got a lot of snow plowing videos. And if you want to see the review on the Case SR240, the link is in the description below for that video. Thanks for watching, guys.